As an astrophotographer, I'm always in the most remote locations, trying to get as far away from light pollution as possible. So my camper van becomes my mobile home and office. So I need a powerful laptop that I can take with me on the road that can handle all of the tasks that I throw at it. So Asus have kindly gifted me the Zenbook Pro Duo 15-inch OLED laptop. It's the latest version of the Zenbook Pro Duo. And the first thing you notice when you open the device is that it pops up off the desk, which is going to be great for ventilation, which is something laptops struggle with. But then the first thing that pops up quite literally is the dual screen. Now, I've seen adverts with Zenbook Pro Duos and Zenbook Duos in the past, and I always kind of assumed that the, the extra screen would be a little bit of a gimmick, but it's actually quite literally a dual monitor, just like when you plug a monitor into a laptop. It has the full functionality, so you can just you know, drag stuff down onto that screen, and you can just drag any application you want onto that bottom screen. I thought it would only work with certain applications, but uh, it's really cool. And then there's even shortcuts to switch between the screens with the app. So you see Lightroom jumps down there and the File Explorer goes up there. There's all these shortcuts that you can drag things and it's really, really good for multitasking and just gives you an extra screen, much like you would when you're working on a desktop. And it's just a really nice use of that extra unused real estate on the bottom half of laptops. And there's some really unique abilities of the dual screen, which I'll, I'll dive into a bit later on. But the dual screen is, it has the same pixel width as a 4K screen. Uh, it's obviously a bit of a weird aspect ratio, but it has the same pixel width as a 4K screen, uh, which is really awesome. I kind of expected it to be like, 1920 pixels or something, but it's the same as the 4K OLED screen on the top half of the laptop. So we're finally starting to see OLED technology make its way into portable devices, which is great. And I was incredibly surprised at how color accurate this screen is. I've been comparing it to my professionally calibrated editing monitor. And the colors are almost perfectly the same. Like you really have to look for it to see a difference. I was really, really surprised. It's easily the most color accurate laptop I've ever had straight out of the box. And perhaps the biggest difference between this screen and, and my edited monitor is that because of the OLED technology, the blacks are so much deeper, like they are really black, um, which is awesome because obviously as an astrophotographer, a lot of my images are quite dark and have a lot of black areas. So it really helps to maintain good contrast in the dark black areas of the images. And then both of these screens are touch screens, so I can click this thing here and drag it around there, you can do the same for, for this screen as well. Not only are they touch screens, but it comes with a stylus as well. And this stylus works on both the screens. So if you're a graphic designer or you know a graphic painter, or even if you're in just Photoshop, it's really, really useful and it's very, very responsive. It's pretty damn awesome. Uh, some people ask me what the keyboard was like because it's on the bottom of the device and how it is to type. And I've found it to be pretty good. If you do find it a little high for your wrist, then you can use the supplied wrist pad, like so. So that just slots under there and then gives you something to rest on. Makes it a little bit nicer. Obviously a subjective thing, but I've Quite enjoyed the keyboard. I had no issues with it whatsoever. It's quite nice to type on the, I don't know what the word for it is it, but the depression of the keys is um, quite satisfying, but it's nice that they give you this wrist pad, especially if you're working sort of long hours and uh, it's nice that they include that in the box. And another little feature I thought was quite neat is the touchpad on the right hand side doubles up as a numpad to type in numbers. Again, just making the most efficient use of the space and the real estate on the bottom half of a laptop. I thought that was really, really neat. As for connectivity, on the left-hand side, there is the DC charging port. There is a full-sized HDMI, as well as an audio output 3.5 mil. 
On the other side, you have a classic USB 3, and then there are two Thunderbolt USB-C ports. I would have liked to have seen an SD card slot as a photographer, but uh, that's not the end of the world, of course. So, as an astrophotographer who's always on the road, I think it'd be a good idea to jump in the camper van, head out, and put this thing through its paces. Uh, but before I go, how nice is that color? I don't know how good it looks on camera. They call it celestial blue, so I'm obviously gonna like it. And I guess one last thing, it did come with a carry case as well, so that slots in there quite nicely. It's really high quality felt lined case. And then there's a little slot for the, for the stylus as well. So let's get on the road and let's see how this thing performs. So the weather is a bit awful, it's certainly not what was forecasted, so I can't shoot anything new, but I've got plenty of stuff in the archive that I can use to put this thing through its paces and make sure it's up to all of the tasks that I would expect in my line of work as a creative and as a, an astrophotographer. So first thing I want to show you guys is that when you're using the Adobe Suite programs at Lightroom Photoshop Premiere, you get this extra deck on the the dual screen with all of these custom dials and buttons and scrolling bars that you can use and you can adjust the highlights the shadows whatever and the really awesome thing is that if you're not happy with the, the layout of the buttons or maybe you want more buttons and less sliders you can customize it to your heart's content so you just go into the settings you know if you don't want that big zoom dial you can just remove that and then replace it with a bunch of buttons and maybe a slider if you wanted to. So that's really cool. And it's really useful for, you know, shortcuts that you don't have to memorize. It's very visual, they're there right in front of you. You just press them. Um, it's almost like a little photography DJ or something. Um, but you also get a custom layout for each different program. So the layout you have for Lightroom will be different for Photoshop and different in Premiere and it just it opens automatically whenever you open one of those programs. That's a pretty unique way to use that dual screen. It's nice that they're using it more than just a dual screen and there's sort of custom stuff going on. And now if I want to test it for photo editing, it's <laughs> we've seen the specs of the computer. It's obviously going to be able to edit photos, but one thing that really interests me is that I've been doing a lot of high resolution panoramas lately, 360 degree panoramas where you're, you know, taking row after row of images and then stitching those into a high resolution image. And those files can be pretty big. So when it comes to the editing, um, sometimes the computer can get a little bit laggy or, you know, lag behind, especially when you're doing things like brushing in Photoshop, you kind of brush and then you have to wait for the, the computer to catch up. Um, but I've just been editing a 360 degree panorama from Madeira, my recent trip to Madeira, and it just hasn't hiccuped. The performance of the laptop is very, very smooth. And um, there's just no lagging, no hiccups, and it's handling those big files really well because I, I save those stitched panoramas as TIFF files to keep all of the information from the raw file. So some of these images are gigabytes in size. They're really, really big. But it's doing a great job. So I'm really happy with that. Next up, one of the most grueling tasks that I normally put my computer through is rendering time lapses. You capture hundreds, sometimes thousands of images, and then you have to edit those in Lightroom and then paste all the settings, render out all of those files as images to then stitch into a time-lapse video. And I've just edited this time-lapse from London, uh, the Moonrise in London, and it's 821 images. And it rendered really quickly, like far quicker than I've ever experienced with a laptop. And that's of course, thanks to the, the Intel i9 processor, the NVIDIA RTX 3070 GPU, speeding up those render times. And I'm also able to use the computer the same time that it's rendering a time-lapse. In the past, with computers I've had, if I'm to render a time-lapse, I just leave the computer alone because you try and do something else 
like browse your emails or do something and it really chokes up the PC. But this is handling the multitasking really well. Again, that's the Intel i9 processor just allowing you to, to multitask. And the speed at which it rendered the time lapse, for me as a creative, is going to be a huge time saver because there are so many times in the past where I've captured a time lapse in the field, and there's hundreds of images to render, and I'm just so busy, and I'm like, oh, I'll do it later, I'll do it tomorrow. And I know it's going to choke up my PC for a while and I'm going to have to leave it. So there's so many time lapses that are sitting in my archive that just haven't been rendered um, because of just not having good enough hardware. But now I'm not even going to think twice. I'm just going to render that time lapse straight away, carry on doing stuff in the background, checking my emails, whatever. So that's super awesome. And then a lot of the similar lines of time lapsing where you're taking hundreds of images and then stacking them. Um, I've been editing a few deep space photographs on this laptop as well. So um, Andromeda, the spiral galaxy, and Rho of Yuki, the molecular cloud complex in the constellation Scorpius. And yeah, it just stacked them super quickly. And editing on this screen, because it's just so color accurate, I can get really nice, accurate colors in my photographs, which is great. And the contrast in the blacks from the OLED technologies it just looks so rich. There's a real, I don't know, it's like a sheen to the blacks and it just looks, just looks so good. So I'm really happy with the way I can edit these deep space images and well, any of my images, to be honest, just having color accuracy is so important to me. And it's something that laptops have been notoriously bad for. So this is really awesome to see. And then lastly, probably the, final grueling task that I would put my uh, workstation through is video because I do a lot of these vlogs which you guys are watching now and you know rendering videos or editing videos can be quite a grueling task for a laptop so I'm gonna have to stop filming so I can put these clips into the vlog so I can edit the vlog render the vlog film myself letting you guys know how it rendered and then I've got to put that into the vlog and then re-render the vlog and then upload it to YouTube. So I'm going to stop filming. I'm going to finish off editing this vlog, kind of, and then I'll get back to you guys and let you know how it rendered. All right, so I've just rendered this vlog, but 80% of the vlog because now I've got to put this clip, which I'm filming now, into the vlog. But it rendered super fast. The editing also, I mean, it scrubs through video footage like without even hiccuping and the render time was super fast and that is thanks to two things so first is obviously the super powerful nvidia rtx 3070 graphics card and the second thing is that last year there was an update to adobe premiere which takes advantage of the graphics card to render out the files so premiere has taken advantage of that nvidia graphics card the render times are super quick, which is great because I can upload these videos to YouTube quicker. It's going to be, you know, time saving for me. And as they say, time is money, especially when it's your, your business. So overall, I'm really happy. It edits videos really well, even 4K footage. It renders super quickly, editing photos, even large gigabyte files, high resolution panoramas. It edits really easily rendering time lapses and stacking deep space images does those like it's nothing especially the time lapses like the speed up in the render time for me is huge because it means that i'll render more of my time lapses and put them to good use and yeah the color accuracy of the screen super impressive easily the best i've seen on a laptop the richness in the blacks thanks to the oled technology as well just amazing 4k resolution it's just an all-round hell of a package for creatives. So if you want to find out more about this laptop, make sure to follow the link in the video description. If you have any questions about the laptop, get in the comments down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.